today's Looking Ahead 2023, a World Insight Special. As the World Economic Forum buckles down to work on cooperation in a fragmented world, a one-on-one -on -one with the leader of a key regional player, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev. He talks about blossoming relations with China, how to thrive in a rapidly changing world. We fully support the initiatives of President Xi Jinping with respect to the Middle Corridor. Hello and welcome to World Inside, our special program on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos. Now let's hear a voice from the forum on how to cooperate in a fragmented world. Azerbaijan is a country standing in the crossroads of East and West. It's an important regional natural gas supplier and logistical center. It's also a significant stop along the Belt and Road Initiative. I sat down recently one-on-one -on -one with the Azerbaijan president to hear how his country is coping with this changing world. What a reunion. Mr. President, it's so wonderful to see you again in Davos. Thank you. Very glad to see you again. I remember our last meeting here, and thank you for this opportunity. The friendship from Azerbaijan to China, from uh, Mr. President Yu to the Chinese people, is very much treasured. Uh. Yes, you are right. We have very friendly relations, and China and Azerbaijan are good friends. And uh, I had an opportunity to meet many times President Xi Jinping. And last time, just several months ago, we had an excellent meeting. It was during your birthday, huh? <laughs> he congratulated you on your birthday. Huh? Even before that, we met uh, in this uh, fall of last year at one of the international events and uh, had a very productive discussions about our future cooperation. Talking about China and Azerbaijan, there has been not only discussion, but actions. And that is really appreciated and, shall I say, admired. So how do you see the actions of cooperation has now bring China and Azerbaijan together for the longer term in a sustainable way? So we have established a very solid platform for our cooperation. The uh, political relationship for 30 years already demonstrates that we are really good partners and uh, trustful friends. We have very good cooperation in international institutions. We always support each other's territorial integrity and sovereignty and established a very strong political platform. So now we are building a kind of a building of our economic cooperation based on that. And uh, in today's world, it's very important because we have new challenges, uh, new problems, and new opportunities. And uh, we're looking forward to see more Chinese companies in Azerbaijan. Quite a few of them are already very active in different areas. We fully support the initiatives of President Xi Jinping with respect to the Middle Corridor. And in Azerbaijan, we've done already our homework. We've established uh, all the necessary segments of the uh, transportation infrastructure. And also, we are looking forward to cooperate in the areas of energy and uh, agriculture and high tech. So uh, many Chinese companies uh, from IT sector are present in Azerbaijan for many years. So we really have a very diversified relationship. I understand there's an enormous amount of discussion and action regarding investment in infrastructure, energy, and construction, for example, from Chinese companies in Azerbaijan. So what kind of policies are you providing for them and other investors coming into your country, sir? In general, investment climate in Azerbaijan is very positive. Uh, foreign investments and local investments are duly protected. And uh, we uh, hope that there will be more investments in non-energy sector because most of the investments which we received were in oil and gas sector. <laughs> this was natural and we uh, understand it. But now for us it's a time to uh, think more about diversification, not to think but to act. 
And therefore, investments in non-energy sector, in infrastructure, in transportation infrastructure in particular, in renewable sources of energy is one of our priorities. We are now in the final stage of the inauguration of the free economic uh, zone in the uh, region of Alat, close to Baku. We hope that Chinese companies will pay attention to these opportunities. And of course, situated between east and west, just on the uh, traditional Silk Route uh, geography, creates a lot of opportunities for us. We just need to properly plan and structure our policy and uh, create even better conditions for foreign investments. But of course, we cannot force investors to, to come. <laughs> we only can demonstrate. Invite them. Uh, invite them, yeah. With worms and uh, favorable policies. Uh, uh, having said that, I do want to talk about the Belt and Road because this year, Mr. President, is the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. Azerbaijan plays a very constructive role on the ancient Silk Road, which has now become the Belt and Road. So how do you reflect upon the achievements and coordination cooperation regarding Belt and Road Initiative with China? And how do you see where the future is? Because the world is changing so fast. So strategically, where are you going? So first of all, the uh, initiative, uh, Belt and Road Initiative, was a timely and a very wise uh, initiative which now embraces uh, and covers uh, big geography. And Azerbaijan, from the very first days, actively joined. And we started to invest in the uh, infrastructure which was not in place. So during these years, exactly during the last 10 years, we built uh, uh, one of the biggest, and maybe it's the biggest, uh, trade seaports in the Caspian with a capacity of handling cargoes of 15 million tons. And we will expand it to 25 million tons. We built a shipyard to be able to manufacture the vessels to transport cargo across uh, the Caspian. We invested largely in the railroad infrastructure, not only in Azerbaijan, but also in the neighborhood. And now we allocate additional investments to expand the capacity of uh, this railroad from Baku to the western destination. And uh, we did all the necessary other uh, projects like highways, uh, airports, so Azerbaijan a country which do not have uh, open access to the world ocean became an international logistical and transportation center. Mm -hmm. So Belt and Road Initiative also uh, activated uh, the transportation through uh, different routes, particularly north-south. Yes. And uh, now we also talk about north-west. So it's really a global project which uh, is moving successfully and all the countries on route, they already see the benefits. Mm -hmm. Of course, it depends on the strategy of the countries, how they treat the transportation uh, projects. For us, it was one of the main factor to diversify our economy and reduce our dependence on oil and gas revenues. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can tell you that uh, last year, the transit through Azerbaijan increased 75%, not only because of infrastructure, but also because of proper management. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, measures which have been taken, they allow us to speed up the process of cargo transportation, to eliminate uh, bureaucratic obstacles, and make it physically more uh, attractive. Mm -hmm. Also important thing is a tariff policy because here we need the unification of efforts of many countries so that um, we can have an agreed tariff policy so no country artificially in tries to increase their profit. No, we should uh, learn uh, to uh, see the shared benefit the more cargoes crosses our territory, the more benefits we get, the more jobs we create. And uh, I know that uh, China have initiated and already started a new project, railroad project, 
China, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan. This also is directed to our destination, to the Caspian Sea. This is a very important uh, additional supply route. Greener, more environmentally friendly, of higher quality. How do you see that is being reflected in your cooperation with China and some of the other countries, briefly? Uh, we want um, to add to our cooperation portfolio with China uh, cooperation in the area of green energy. Mm -hmm. Because there is a big potential in Azerbaijan and there is uh, also big uh, technological achievements in China. So we need to combine these efforts. Uh, with respect to our priorities, now renewable sources of energy became uh, one of the main priorities for us. Uh, during the recent uh, several months, we signed uh, documents uh, which will provide investments to create 22 gigawatt of renewable sources of energy, both onshore and offshore. And uh, that will completely uh, change the regional uh, uh, economic configuration because we know about green transition, which is uh, taking place in Europe. At the same time, Azerbaijan is a supplier of oil and natural gas. So now we plan to supply green energy, including green hydrogen, which we will produce from the offshore uh, wind power stations. As I said, we already signed preliminary documents, of course, agreements to be signed in the future. But this really has a very big potential, not only for our country, but for the whole region. And we need also to invest in the transmission lines to be able to export because we do not need so much energy for ourselves. Mr. President, I was listening to you over, I was listening to you, to you Mr. President, over the past uh, 10 minutes. I heard a lot of doing, have done, already achieved, and that is extremely impressive because there are a lot of talks these days. Actions are mostly appreciated. Having said that though, I remember over the past few uh, World Economic Forums I went to, we once were sharing on the stage. Uh, yes. You were kind enough to be in the panel that I moderated. Yeah, I we had several interviews in depth. I remember you were very constructive. You want to be on the front line, telling people how your country is ready. I, I always wonder, what does it take to be able to be bold enough, quote unquote, and, and brave enough to make the promise, and later, even more importantly, have the guts to implement the promises. First, you must be decent with your people, and then they will support you, and then they will uh, trust you. So with respect to all our programs, which we've initiated, all have been implemented. No one in Azerbaijan can say and then prove that once the program was adopted and then was not implemented. When the Swiss Alps long for more winter snow, when economic recession looms over the world, when geopolitics intrudes into almost everybody's life, it is time to ask the question. How can a divided world learn to work together? As the World Economic Forum holds its annual meeting, participants gather in the small town in Davos. So join me to find out how to cooperate in a fragmented world. After all, it is time for all of us to answer that question. Mr. President, you talk about the energy crisis. I do want to ask you, that is also one of the most important topics discussed at the World Economic Forum this year. Now, since the energy crisis, Azerbaijan has been strategically working with others and make sure Azerbaijan will play a crucial role to the solution of the world's problems. So, Mr. President, tell me more about how you strategically managed to come up with these ideas, 
managed to bring all these stakeholders, as they say at the World Economic Forum, together and do it at a time that is quite urgent. I do want to hear also, how do you see the evolution of this energy crisis as we go on? No, with respect to our initiatives and uh, uh, achievements in this area, first of all, we did um, create a good investment climate uh, in the beginning of our path towards uh, energy security and managed to attract uh, multi-billion investments in oil and gas and without even having the expert routes. We accumulated first uh, investments when we didn't have pipelines. So pipelines came later. And in order to build these pipelines, we had to um, agree with uh, transitors, with our neighbors. So we had to create a win-win situation and uh, to be fair and to be uh, cooperative and supportive. I always said in our energy policy that Azerbaijan will keep the balance between us, producers, transitors, and consumers. If there is no balance, it will not work. Each part of the energy process must get its uh, share of profit. Of course, depending on contribution, it must be fair. And we always were fair. Therefore, two years ago, we completed the construction of the Southern Gas Corridor, which stretches from Baku to Southern Europe, and the distance is 3,500 kilometers. Part of it goes under the sea, part of it goes through high mountains. It's very complicated technically, and very costly project, which embraced uh, seven countries, um, more than 10 companies, leading financial institutions, World Bank, EBRD, uh, Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank. AIIB. Yes, EIB, European Investment Bank, and ADB. All the five leading <coughs> financial institutions, we managed to create a teamwork. So that's how it worked. And now, when all these infrastructure projects were ready, it happens that our gas is needed more than ever before because there is a gas shortage in Europe and our pipeline to Europe is uh, one of the elements of uh, contribution to energy security. Last uh, year we signed a, a document with European Commission to increase two times our gas export to European market and we will achieve that target. Within five years, it is doable, though it will be not easy. So Azerbaijan, of course, is not a very big supplier of uh, natural gas, but we have our market in the eastern and uh, southern Europe. And the more gas we produce in the future, we will expand our geography. So you are saying, be ready, the chance will be there. Yes. That's yes. what we're trying to say. Exactly, exactly. Now you look at the world. This is uh, the World Economic Forum with the theme cooperation in a fragmented world. The reason why it's the theme is because it's difficult to cooperate. On that theme, as a leader of your own country, and now playing a constructive role to face to the world challenges, how do you see um, the meaning of cooperation? What if it's difficult to cooperate? I think uh, ambitions of uh, different countries, a kind of a, a struggle for so-called leadership, uh, either in the region or in the world, and uh, miscalculation of uh, the potential, its own potential, and underestimation of your vis-a-vis, -vis, your opponents. And this leads to mistrust, this leads to tensions, and this leads to wars. Uh, our policy always was based on cooperation in the real sense of that world, because we strongly believe that only through cooperation you can achieve success. The more you give, the more you help, the more you will get. It's, uh, that's uh, how to say, how the world works. It's and like life, in It's a way. like life, exactly. Politics and life, it's uh, very, very similar. 
because politics is being done by people. And uh, one of the examples which I can also bring to your attention, answering this question, is our efforts as a chairman of non-aligned movement. Mm -hmm. Non-aligned movement is chaired by Azerbaijan for already fourth year. By unanimous decision, we've been elected, and by unanimous decision, our chairmanship have been extended one more year until the end of this year. And during this uh, period, we really demonstrated that we want this uh, movement to be vocal. We want this movement to take its place on the world uh, arena. Because polarization of big powers is obvious. The uh, gap between the interests of big powers probably will not shrink. Therefore, non-aligned movement, which was actually created as an alternative, but then to a certain degree lost its potential, has a great potential because uh, the countries have more or less the same uh, past, mm -hmm. uh, the same problems. Uh, most of them have been colonized and they know what is to live under the control of others. Uh, during the times of pandemic, we provide uh, medical, humanitarian, and financial assistance to more than 80 countries. And we did it voluntarily. And we did it not to get some, uh, how to say, benefits, just because we thought if we have this capability, we should do it. We had a time when we needed help in the beginning of 90s, when we were poor and uh, with a lot of social problems. So we know how it is to be poor. So we need to help. And if this ideology or philosophy dominates, then the world will be much safer. Uh, and once again, the, the main problems which the world faces now they do not have legitimate source. It's just perceptions, ambitions, uh, fight for so-called virtual leadership. It is virtual. It can be created by media which is under your control. It can be created by NGOs which are under your control. But you cannot prove it in a so-called competition. Therefore, let's put, let those who do it put down these weapons, let them concentrate on the needs of the mankind, on poverty, on malnutrition, on uh, many countries having no access to drink drinking water. This has a fundamental, electricity. These are fundamental problems. What you said just now, Mr. President, reminds me of uh, the Chinese side uh, suggesting a community of shared future. Yes, exactly. We all have the basic needs yes. as humans. Yes. And we know who is good to us, who are our friends, and who can we walk along with for the longer term. Exactly. And I can tell you uh, sincerely that what China does on global arena with respect to support, cooperation, must be highly uh, valued by the international community. You do it on global scale. Uh, we do it on maybe more regional scale. But we follow the same philosophy. And it works because, look, China is one of the most successful countries in the world, the leading economy of the world. And this you achieved with your own efforts and your uh, wisdom of your people, and leadership, and uh, commitment to, to the result. My final question, Mr. President. The Chinese Vice Premier Liu He uh, spoke at the World Economic Forum ongoing right now. He talked about China's unwearing commitment on uh, economic development and also reform and opening up, opening China to a higher level of a higher quality to the rest of the world. I know you have been interacting with Chinese leaders frequently. So how do you see these commitments from China and how do you see uh, what it means for your country? This is very important what you say uh, because uh, Chinese economy uh, you know it better, it's not only the economy of your country. Chinese economy influences the global economy. And uh, many prognoses 
of some uh, an, an analytic institutions are based <laughs> on the prognosis of how Chinese economy will, uh, will grow, what will be the growth, what will be the interest rate. So this is your responsibility and uh, your government uh, fully understands this global responsibility because and when a uh, high-ranking uh, governmental official makes such a statement here in Davos, it gives, sends a very good signal to world economy and I think to all countries, including, uh, including our country. And uh, growth in China for a country like Azerbaijan also is very, very important. And you demonstrated a, a consecutive growth for, for many years and decades. And we wish you success because uh, as friends, we want uh, that everything what you plan is uh, implemented. And also as part of uh, world community because many countries and global economy uh, to a very serious degree depend on your economic performance. <laughs> Mr. President, this year is the year of the rabbit for the Chinese Lunar New Year. And just a few days to go, we are going to celebrate it. I really wonder, Mr. President, uh, would you be kindly provide your greetings to our viewers in China? I want to congratulate our Chinese friends with the celebration of the Chinese New Year and wish uh, all the people of China peace, prosperity, success. We in Azerbaijan are your friends and good partners we enjoy a very good relationship for many, many years and we really love your country and we're very glad that more and more Azerbaijanis visit China and more people uh, of China visit Azerbaijan. So people-to-people -people contacts are very important uh, in order to establish closer political relations. I'm sure that China will continue to succeed in its in its economic development, in social development, and the uh, middle corridor which uh, unites us will successfully be implemented. Happy New Year! My exclusive interview with the Azerbaijan president on the sideline of the World Economic Forum in Davos. With that, we're coming to the end of today's program. I'm Tian Wei on behalf of my team, both in Davos and in Beijing. Thanks for being with us. And I'll see you tomorrow.